four inches is honestly pretty big. I had a tweet once where I put a measuring tape good between time. my legs, and it looks pretty big. Yeah. It's a good size. This is my friend Rosie, everybody. <gasps> Hi. So oh, oh, the chicken. Chicken. One friend head has <laughs> Cute. Do you look like this? No, I need. <laughs> Today we are doing a really special video. We're attempting to find a stranger to do a bedroom podcast. I was recently inspired by uh, the Bobby podcast that she did with Drake. So naturally, I thought, hmm, it'd be interesting to do a little interview podcast with one of the lovely people here in LA. The place that I call a temporary home. Excuse me, do you have a quick second for a little, okay. Excuse me, do you guys have a quick second for a little YouTube video? No, no, y'all not even from here, huh? Do you have a quick second? No. You, oh, okay. Oh, well, we don't have that, we kind, don't of have that kind of time. I do have to go. Uh, no. no, sorry. Yeah, no, sir. Damn. So, what's going on? What's happening? What's hot? You are hot, sir. You. I have to leave now? Because my wife's gone. Oh, okay, you too. Excuse me, do you have a quick second for a YouTube interview? Not even two seconds. You in a rush for what? The gym? The boyfriend? What's up? This is my friend Rosie, everybody. Hi. And uh, since we can't find any strangers on the street oh to, to run this podcast, I decided, why don't we just bring a friend? Because... On plan B? Huh? I tell people this. It's not about finding the one. It's about finding the last resort. <laughs> And uh, thank God I have you. I think it'll be a fun little podcast. I, I mean, you, you seen the po uh, the podcast that Bobby did with Drake, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. So it's gonna be that that type of type of vibe. Okay. Are we gonna yeah. have sex after? Isn't this all roadhead? Would you ever like make a deal that was molded after you did? You get more pumps with fewer than chest. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if I ended Jimmy's celibacy? Right. How would you know? You won't be. Ah. Uh, yeah, you're not down. No, no. I have given head to someone that was just a friend before because he was having a bad day. Right? And I'm saying I'm, I'm falling asleep behind the wheel right now. I just need some head. You get one friend head pass for me. Is this when you would want to use it? Yes. This is <laughs> when you come, you're done. When I come. Yeah. Oh, he said never going I shouldn't have said that. how you got me so good and you tried to get rid of the mess. I take it back to the moment I showed you my scars. Was it worth it? Damn, I should have brought like a little candle. <laughs> how, how do we meet? We met at your Halloween party mm. in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, so we've known yeah, each other for two, two, two years now. Two years now. I know. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a fan of your tweets a while before that too. Yeah. When you were advocating for like the four small not, dicks, small yeah. dicks. Yeah, four inches. No, I've made I've made a lot of tweets about four inches specifically. Really? Yeah, because my ex was four inches. Okay. So it was a, big, a couple so, of my exes were four inches. So right. I was a big advocate of that. As yeah, was four, I? Four inches is honestly pretty big when you. Like, I, I had a tweet once where I, like, put a measuring tape, yeah. like, to in between thigh. my legs. Right. And it looks pretty big. Yeah. It's a good size. For you? Ex exactly. For you, Proportional right? as well. Right, 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 right. But, yeah, you did come from, from, from UPenn, uh, which is kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's one of the Ivy Leagues. It's not Harvard or Columbia, but it's, right, it's up there. Yeah, yeah, no, um, and I went to Wharton, which is, uh, so that was the best undergraduate, like, business school yeah. of all the schools. I was a co-founder of, like, a, a startup here. Ah, what's the startup? What, what do you... Uh, what I you founded mean? a company called Fanhouse, so we help creators make money. When did you decide to start Fanhouse? And, and mind you, I, I just want to also give the viewers, just, just preface by saying, like, Fanhouse raised over $20 million, mm -hmm. which is... Quite twenty million dollars. That's a lot of money. That's eight, eight, eight. Yeah, yeah. Can I mm -hmm. count? Can I count? Mm -hmm. Can I fucking count? Yeah, that's eight, right? One. Yeah, yeah. baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess for context, uh, Fan House is a company I started pretty much soon after graduating from college, actually. Mm -hmm. So this was in 2020. Um, but I grew up in a really low-income family, so we're, we were all Vietnamese immigrants. My parents don't speak English, like low-wage workers. So in college, I started providing for everyone in my family because my mom got run over by a car and couldn't work anymore. So I was very like, shit, I need to find a new way to make money. Right. And that's how I started getting involved with like 
figuring out how to monetize as a creator through different platforms. I was on Patreon, I was on OnlyFans, I was on Twitch, I was doing brand deals, like anything I could make money from. I was like charging people for my close friends on Instagram, I was charging people for my like Twitter private alt, I was charging people for everything. And I was like, yeah, I was hustling. And I was like, I wish there was a platform that kind of like incorporated all mm -hmm. of this in it. So that's how I ended up founding Fan House actually. So uh, you, were, you were on OnlyFans? Yeah. So were you no no so i use only fans in a very different way than a lot of people know it okay um, for now so i i liked only fans mostly just for the paywall as aspect so right. when i got on only fans i actually did singing covers on only fans like i just now, now w w were the people disappointed yes <laughs> yeah but a lot of people think only fans and obviously they think not safe for work content right and when they subscribe even though like my bio was literally it, my bio said like oh i really like singing like it didn't say anything sexual mm. but people subscribe and they expect nudes and when they aren't nudes they actually get really angry and really aggressive like mm. i kept getting death threats and rape threats when i used to be on only fans because people were like like yeah show me your fucking tits or i'm gonna kill you jesus like, it was stuff like that but like every day i was getting jesus. messages like that every day and it was so bad for my mental health but that's why being on OnlyFans on all these other platforms i was able to see kind of the pros and cons right like the pros was like okay there's a way to make money here but the cons is like it's really unsafe so how can i take what i know and make a platform that's better for creators right so it was through that that i ended up founding fan house how does one um raise that much money this week's video was sponsored by t chanley if you've been watching my channel for a minute you, you guys know i've been pushing men's skincare as we age guys our skincare becomes drastically more important and we need to take care of our face and how we look that is the first thing that any stranger see and whenever i go out in public to talk to strangers i want to make the best impression and what's the first thing they see my face so i need to be able to keep it clean a lot of things we don't pay attention to right is how much dust and mold and oils like get up under our skin with the tea channel a two times a week exfoliation scrub helps you with just that and on top of that here in california you got harsh sun rays attacking your face that's why i use my daily moisturizer with spf 20 it could help shield you and protect you from the sun as well as just keeping your face moisturized a good skincare product is something i i hold very valuable and i I think whether you're giving a presentation, you're meeting new people, I think having a great skincare routine, make sure your face looks clear, it looks hydrated, and it looks presentable. It's so, so important. That being said, go ahead and check out T Chanley. It will be the first link in the description box, and you'll get 30% off plus a free gift if you go buy that sh right now. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> no rice. Just a bowl All of chicken. chicken. <laughs> All chicken. <laughs> Itadakimasu. Thank you for the food. Itadakimasu. How's the chicken? It's good. It's chicken. No cold. There's no microwave, huh? No. It's okay. Can you live like this? Mm, well, not in a cabin this small, like forever. Mm -hmm. But if it was like a house here? Yeah, you walk out and just trees everywhere. Oh, that'd be so nice. I, I feel like as long as I have heating and electricity, I could. And dick. Mm. Yeah. Or a good vibrator. No, no, I need dick. No. <laughs> It's been a while since I've used my pocket pussy. I miss it. Do you? Yeah, I think it got lost a little bit in the uh, in the move. Is it better than just using your hands? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I bust so much. Really? Mm -hmm. I bust on myself sometimes. You what? Good thing nobody's here. You're giving yourself facials. <laughs> Good thing I don't have the door open. Oh shit, the door's open. <laughs> oh, Gabe, you're home? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what if I made a pocket pussy mm. that was molded after my own? Would I use it? N no, oh, that was weird. <laughs> why, why did you jump to that? No, I don't know. No, I, what the I, fuck? Why, like, why did you propose? Like, why did you propose it? I don't know if I would actually mold it after Right, because then everybody's fucking you. I, yeah, I don't know. I like sex being like intimate, intimate and, and yeah. special. Yeah. Safe sex mm -hmm. make, makes great Good. sex. Oh, I agree with you. I'm a big advocate of like... Safe sex? Yeah, protection, protection. birth control. Yes. But like, yeah, to your point too, birth control alone, I actually don't think is good enough because like birth control doesn't protect you from like STIs, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really like, honestly, you should always Wrap be up. using a condom unless you're with like, a, like one trusted partner. Mm -hmm. And you guys are getting tested. Mm -hmm. like, Even then, there's moments where I'm like, I'm still using a condom because mm. maybe they get, get off birth control because it's fucking mm -hmm. up their body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like women care less, right? Like it's guys that care way more mm -hmm. about whether so, they use so a condom. Guy, or not. So guys just need to find a really good, reliable condom that feels mm -hmm. good. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, it's, so it, it, it's it's for both genders. Yeah, yeah. So you should put me on to one of your girls on Twitter. Is what I'm saying. I think, I think on who would be a good fit or like would want to. All right. Do you think with the, a friend recommendation, that's that's weird too, huh? Mm. Their guard would be completely down if it's like a homegirl that like pitched it. Maybe, but I don't know. I don't know if I know any of them that closely though. That it's like gotcha. on my own. it's more like we're mutuals. Obviously, they they uh, prioritize. Mm -hmm getting that bag mm -hmm. so here's an opportunity to not only get a mm -hmm. bag mm -hmm. but also do good for the world mm -hmm. <sighs> i'm thinking of getting a new tattoo in like october i'm getting one at the end of the month mm. i really want color tattoos and she doesn't really do color that's cool though that's awesome mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go inside and wash my hands. Mm -hmm. I think I just got bit by like a fucking mosquito. Like, yeah, I feel one on my knee. Let's go inside. Okay. Ah. Just an ordinary day. Sun is peaking. You brought me in when I was homeless. I there, did. There, I did. Yeah. You lived. Yeah, you lived at the fan house for like a three month. weeks. A yeah, month. Almost. Yeah, almost. I brought a couple girls over. I know. I, you I know. know. And you were just like, yeah, just left, just, just left wash. sperm on my sheets. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I did. Oh my god. You get one free pass to fuck on my bed whenever. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Just. That means a lot. Yeah. I fucked on Gabe's. Um. So there's actually an article uh, about me on the information. So that's like one of the most well-known tech publications. Uh -huh. I had a front page profile on the information, and it's one of my favorite articles ever because it it goes into my background and founding Fan House. But there's a paragraph in there about how I raised twenty million dollars, and tweet about having a gorilla grip pussy online yeah there's actually a quote in there from one of our investors right. legion uh and what's she's a woman your, what, what's your what's your definition of a gorilla grip <laughs> right tight yeah just it's grippy it's grippy it grips you when you're that, in there that's um do you get any 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 reviews mm -hmm. you get some post coitus mm -hmm. reviews on the yeah. gorilla grip um, yeah, obviously now that I've blown up, like, it's like X hookups are in your DMs, right? right? But like, there's this couple guys that are like, oh, like, you're the, like, the best I've ever had kind of thing, right? Mm. And like, they're trying to hit on me again, like, oh, I right. wanna, I wanna feel you it again. On. And I'm like, yeah. okay, nah, yeah. But, um, yeah. You got some bad hookup stories? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was hooking up with this guy, and I literally asked him, like, he, he was gonna, like, put it in, and I was like, wait, like, I'm not wet because you haven't done foreplay. Can you do foreplay? Like, I specifically asked. I was like, hey, like, you got to yeah, do this first. Right. And I shit you not, he, like, rubbed it for, like, five seconds. Oof. Five. Damn. And he was like, all right. Like, just, yeah. 
But there are a lot he of... Didn't, he didn't know what foreplay was. So, I don't know. So Again, you know, I don't know if he didn't know or he didn't care. Maybe maybe we need to define it for the people watching. What is foreplay? I you mean, want your titty sucked? That's the you, thing. You you want your you want some 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 little. That's the thing. That's what you should ears? be asking. Yeah, that's what you should ask in bed. So so that's basically what happened. We were hooking up, and I was like, okay, he didn't do foreplay. This feels like shit. I'm gonna get myself off because I know how to do that. And then I came pretty fast. And then as soon as I came, I pulled a I pulled a man move, right? Like guys, you know this because you do this. But I finished, and I'll I was like, this. I'm done. I'm done. Sex is over. I, I was like, I was like, I'm done. I was like, get off. I, I came. Yeah, and he was like, he was like, yeah, he was in there. He was straight Uber's up. downstairs. He was like, he was like, wait, what about me? And I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, what about you? Yeah, what about? He ended up going into the bathroom, jerking himself off, and then like, damn. But that's why I think it's really good to explore yourself and know what right. you like, right? Like, I have the phase of like, okay, like hooking up is like this, and yeah, I don't need it or care for it. And sure. Now I just want to like be with someone forever. Wow. While I was also struggling growing up. I, I was also shit in school. <laughs> so for a hot period of my life, my parents had no hope left. You were never a disappointment. Mm -hmm. I was a disappointment up until 21. Like, yeah, Asian parents are so rough on their kids. And like, I mean, education is great, right? And it, it has like served me really well. And I really believe in education. Being a parent is hard. Yeah, but it's not the only thing. And I think Asian parents don't understand the concept of like that they can be wrong. They take their yeah. traditional values and, and teachings from china come to this country yeah. and apply it and disregard my mental health disregard happiness disregard yeah. other um uh, areas of achievement yeah. other uh, success factors it's so crazy i think growing up i i really struggled with insecurity because my family was poor but also like because my parents never made me feel good enough which was crazy because i've yeah i've always been naturally smart like i made all a's like from pre-k to fucking like to high school like right. senior year i never made a single b in my life when i got into penn right mm -hmm. in ivy league with a full ride right. do you know what my dad told me right. he, he was straight up like it's what, not what, harvard yeah why, why aren't you yeah. at harvard like he he was not proud of me i mean my mom kept telling for? me that i was a bad daughter to the extent where she went to my school and told all of my teachers lies about me like said i was a bad like like a liar like a bad student like a whore like she told, told me to a whore yeah 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 because i had a boyfriend and again wow. i was a virgin right i've never done sh and then i ended up moving out of the, the house and getting emancipated from my parents so that i could finish out the school year so it's like i don't know i, I think asian parents really just like I, I wish they prioritized happiness of their children sometimes yeah. over like success yeah. and and their idea of success is so close-minded it's always like doctor lawyer I, I look back these days and I'm just like, wow, yeah. boy, were they wrong. All those nights that I spent editing on Sony Vegas, yeah. they were mad <laughs> for, for, for like, why aren't you, oh. why aren't you doing your common apps? I, I'm getting a bag editing yeah. these videos. Yeah. The fuck? And like, honestly, even if you weren't, if that's what you were passionate about and you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Like, why don't your parents want you to be happy? I think that's something I struggled with for a long time. Because mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I was so successful on paper. And I did all these things that they wanted. I'm making money. I'm providing for all of us. Yeah. And I still never felt like I was good enough. And it was like, I've told you this before, but I was so depressed. I was so suicidal. Right? And it was just like, I don't know. Like, if like Asian parents sat down and really thought about it. Yeah. You know, and like set their egos aside, set like what they, they think. They don't is know right the aside. imposed pressure they, they do yeah. on their children. Yeah. And you end up having a kid that hates you forever and doesn't talk to you. Yeah. And is that worth it? Sometimes I think like it's on us to try to teach our parents too, right? Yeah. And it was really hard with my parents. It took me moving out everything. I had to prove that I was smart to them. And then they started listening to me. But eventually we were able to heal our relationship, right? Like my mom was finally like, Oh, like, you know what you're doing and I trust you and I yeah. support you, yeah. right? And I love you. Like, I yeah. finally heard those words from her and they were very healing. One night when I was in college and had like an all-nighter where mm -hmm. she apologized to me. She told me, she like, from her point of view, she was just like, you had a boyfriend and I freaked out because I thought you were going to have sex and you were going to do drugs and right. you're going to like ruin your life. And, yeah. and I did all these things to protect you. But yeah, I was like, you went about it the wrong way. I know it's out of love, but like, you really hurt me, right? Yeah. There was a period in my life or in the family mm -hmm. life where my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And this was around the time when 
I was I had a heavy like video game addiction. It was like an escape from like the bullying right. from I hate the school. Fuck fuck homework. Yeah. Right? But the games they were fun. I was part of a clan. They cared about me. They listened to my problems. Um I think it destroyed the relationships I had with, mm. with, with, with my dad because he was he would be so mad at me. So then, he blamed the cancer on me. That's crazy. He blamed. That's crazy. Because we would get into these fights and he would be stressed out and he'd be like, "Is you know how's my clan clan battles get you cancer, Dad? Yeah. From a fight? Yeah. From disagreement? He thinks by guilt tripping me. Yeah. I, I would stop. My mom." Lied to us before about having cancer to manipulate us to like do what she wanted, and, and it's like I don't know. It's it's just like I don't know. So many parents are really just so immature. They're just like kids. It took me a really, I mean, a, a long time to like forgive my parents and like my dad too, and really empathize. You spend your whole life in Vietnam until you're like forty, then you come to a brand new country so your kids can have a better life. You have no money. Right, my mom was like working three jobs, going to ESL to learn English, right. and then going home to take care they of us. To, they had to the do all of, that to just yeah, survive. The amount of stress you're under, she, right? You were so stressed by poverty, right. right? My parents were. So you can't. We can't even blame them. No, it's a it's a toxic side, which is why like I I always had love for my parents and I forgave yeah. them and like. But it's that's such a fucking noble sacrifice that we're in a yeah. position now to yeah. be educated, yeah. to do what we love. If anything, we have to thank them. They must be so proud, you know. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. nice. Ooh. <laughs> I feel I feel like we really encapsulated human nature here. Sex, love, family. It's trifecta. All right. <laughs> All right, back at it. Back at it. Give me the camera, y'all.